Hi, today I would like to teach you to find a very interesting position in your horoscope or in the horoscope of the people you love or the people you're interested in. And it is all about emotional groundedness and how supported a person feels in their life to follow their goals and how emotionally stable a person is. And you know, the more emotionally stable and balanced a person is, the more productive they can be in their life, the more focused they, they can be about the manifestation of their uh, ideas, of their dreams, you know. So it is very important what I'm going to show you. Actually, not many people, maybe half people will have this, so maybe one-third of people will have such position in their horoscope, or one-fourth. Uh, <clears throat> But it's always a plus when you find it in your horoscope. It always shows a most stable and grounded person. And emotional stability is always indicated by the moon. So go to my website, astrolada.com. Go to my birth chart calculator. And for this, actually, you don't even need to know the time of your birth. Everyone can check it in their horoscope as long as they know the day and the year. Uh, so basically, you enter the appropriate data. If you know the time of birth is perfect, actually, then it's the best, of course. But even if you don't know, you can continue. And you'll come with such a chart. This is the birth chart that you will get. Or oh, those of you who are into Western astro who are, who are using the Western type of chart, it is the same thing. It doesn't matter. We're using tropical astrology here. So it is the same way that you use such kind of chart or such kind of chart. The difference with this chart is that the beginning of the horoscope is at the top, while in this chart, the ascendant, which is the beginning of the horoscope, starts from uh, from this side here. But, you know, you can go around first, second, third, fourth, fifth houses, you know, go in this direction. So I want you to find where the moon is. And in my chart, it will be indicated, say, like this with the letters M and O. In the Western type of chart, it will be indicated by the sign of the moon, you know. So in my chart, you find M, O, the moon. And it can be in any of those quadrants, you know. It doesn't matter where it is. What matters is to see if within, if in the next two quadrants, which surround the moon, or if you're using Western type charts, in the next two signs, in the previous sign and the sign after, not houses, I'm talking signs here, that in the, uh, in the signs before or after the moon, there is another planet and only the planets, the five embodied planets matter. So this is uh, Venus, which is written like that. This is Mars. Oops, sorry. Mars. Mercury. It's written like M-E. Saturn or Jupiter. In my chart, they indicated with letters. In the Western chart, they indicated with the symbols, you know. So we're looking for only one of those five planets. If you see Venus, Mars, Mercury, Saturn, or Jupiter on the side of the moon, either on the preceding sign or on the, uh, on, either on the preceding or on the following signs, you know. In my chart, they will be in the different quadrants, basically. You see that in one square preceding before the moon, there is a planet, then you have uh, what is called uh, in astrology, it's, 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 it's the grounding. And why does it work, first of all? The moon is the emotional reaction of the person. If something new comes to you, how do you react to it? Do you all lose control and do you go all crazy or c confused? You know, if the moon, if there are no planets around the moon in the signs before and after the moon, it is as if the moon doesn't have any crutches. It's like you don't have any emotional crutches to fall on or emotional habits or reactions actions to fall on, to buffer what is coming to you from the outside world. And uh, if, the, if there are actually no planets from in the signs before, before or after the moon, a person will be like, imagine emotionally reactive like a um, naked nerve because there is nothing buffering and there is no crutches around it. So when something gets thrown of them, new or surprising or unusual, which is out of the 
uh, default mode of acting, you know, even if it's a, a usual situation, a very small situation, like you see the block, you see that the road to your work is blocked and you have to take a new uh, detour or something, anything new that you're confronted with or anything that happens in your life, how you react emotionally to it. And if there are no planets before, of those planets, only those five planets, you can have Rahu or Ketu, these don't count, you know. These, we don't, we don't care if they're before or after the moon. Or you can have the moon, or you can have the sun. The sun is not, is, it also doesn't matter. Only the five embodied planets can make a difference, you know. Uh, Western people who use the chart, they can say, oh, I have Neptune here, I have Pluto. Those are, those are uh, the invisible planets. We don't count them. We count only the visible planets because they're the ones that can really have an impact. So we're looking only for those five planets. And uh, so as I said, if there are no such planets in the preceding or the falling signs after the moon, this person will be much more emotionally when something new comes to them, they'll be a bit, it will take them a while for them, you know, to react, you know, they'll feel a bit flustered, they'll feel a bit confused, they might not be, they, they, they might react with a bit of a loss or confusion, you know, I, for instance, don't have any planets around the moon, so when something new gets thrown of me, I don't keep composure and I'm not grounded, so I'm not really cool, you know, <laughs> and it's uh, actually people who have planets before or after the moon, they feel cooler, you know, know, because they know how to handle situations very quickly, immediately. They have groundedness, and people who don't have, they feel more emotionally dis destabilized than others, you know, because you throw something new at them, and they're like, uh, or, or they, they get frozen because they, uh, they don't know how to act exactly. It's not always so extreme, but it takes a little bit time before they can adjust, because the moon shows how quickly you can adjust to something new. And what happens, for instance, if there is Venus, in the sign before or after the moon. Uh, well, Venus, when something gets thrown at you, Venus is a benefic planet, is the planet of, um, uh, uh, is the planet of basically self-worth and self-esteem and pride. So something you shock someone and this person reacts with uh, kind of um, uh, self-esteem, they keep their self-esteem, they keep their proudness, they would not do something that diminishes them or lowers them in some way. So these people always something new comes around to them and they react with Venus's charm and uh, kindness and sweetness and um, there is calm composure about that, you know. They will not attack you, they will not uh, be in any way uh, um, you know, lose, lose their head, like there is, Venus is sweet, composed energy, is kind energy, so these people kind of handle new situations with dignity, with uh, pride, and uh, Venus is the planet of evaluating something, whether it's worthy or not, so something gets thrown at you, and you have to make a quick decision, and uh, uh, Venus anchors you by being able to make the right decision. I have a friend with this position, and she always makes the right choices in the, in the critical situations, you know, it's fantastic to have this. It's always like she keeps her composure, her pride, and she is able to react with more, uh, you know, with with more wisdom because Venus is the planet which judges what is worthy, what is not worthy, and. Um, uh, when, for instance, you, you're confronted with the choice of two partners for dancing, you're going, they're coming towards you. When you have Venus in the signs before or after the moon, you'll be able to choose the more correct one who is actually going to suit you better, you know, who is more worthy partner. You have a red and white dress and, you know, very quickly you have to make a decision. Someone tells you choose now and such people will choose, will choose better with more wisdom. And with more kindness, you know, confronted with a new situation, Venus will react kindly, will react uh, um, with gracefully. Uh, what happens if you have, for instance, Mercury in the sign before the moon or in the sign after the moon? Mercury is the planet of uh, knowledge. So immediately something comes to you, confronts you, and you immediately search your mind for something to answer back. So such people, uh, when cornered in a situation or something new happens, they immediately can say something funny or something uh, that to, to ease the situation or something to resolve the situation. Or they immediately can search their mind quickly for uh, some piece of information which will help them in this, this, uh, in this situation. So they're quite open to new things. They're quite 
uh, open to to uh, uh, to new experiences and they're open to incorporate this knowledge so they don't they don't get flustered they actually quite feel quite adventurous when something new comes to them or something they, when they react to things so these people will react quite intelligently quite quite kindly and with good communication they'll uh, they'll react with good ability to handle the situation and whatever is coming emotionally you know, to them, with using their mind, with using their intelligence, with using their uh, rational mind by organizing things around them. Mercury is the planet of the organizer and the uh, manager. So they'll be able somehow to manage the circumstances around them with more composure, with more, uh, with more grip, with better grip on things. You know, Mercury is a material planet which manages things and it is intelligent planet. So they react intelligently, or, uh, as I said, with a joke or with some, some good communication. They resolve the, they can resolve the problem with communication, you know, or even good things when good things confront them, you know. It's not always when bad things come to you how you, re how you react. How, what courage do you use to emotionally center yourself? Even when something good comes, say you, you heard you, uh, you got a new job, these people would find a great quip to say immediately, you know, or they, they go in a new job, they quickly, very quickly adapt to the environment by communicating with others, by picking up quickly the new knowledge, you know. Well, people without any planets around the moon will take them a while to adapt, you know, a, a while to feel secure in the environment which they are in, a, a while before they can relax emotionally, you know. Uh, what happens if you have Jupiter? in the sign before uh, the moon or after. Well, then you have an emotional crutch, which is Jupiter. And Jupiter is the planet of um, optimism and faith. So these people, when new things come to them, they react optimistically. They find meaning in those things. So they don't destabilize them or decenter them or disbalance them so quickly. So these people, it's quite positive. They might have quite a positive outlook and uh, mental picture about the world. So they react with faith. They will react with composure. Because they feel everything has a meaning, this is happening for a reason, you know, or they would react with very much tolerance, even if they're not spiritual people, very deeply meaningful, they would, you would feel this kind of tolerance and kindness because Jupiter is a benefic planet, so emotionally they'll center themselves through this way, you know, through, through kindness, through immediately giving a helping hand by uh, wisdom, they have like inner wisdom which centers them and faith. Uh, and uh, uh, what else? Let's see if you have Mars in the before or after the moon. Well, when you have Mars, Mars is the planet of opinions, strong opinions that you're strongly attached to. So often these people, when something comes, they immediately uh, fall uh, on, um, uh, often they can react, for instance, a bit more. Uh, because it's a harder planet Mars, but st they still have mental grounding, but they'll react in a way to protect themselves immediately, or they'll, they'll uh, you know, try and do some action immediately, you know, so that there'll be something confront you, good or bad, doesn't matter. You immediately muster energy and you act out or do something which is, you know, which is, which will center you, which will give you a sense of being in control and uh, being emotionally more centered, you know, so these people, when something gets thrown at them, they act. Mars is the planet of action. They use their logic. Mars is the planet of the logic. The, uh, uh, if, if they've done this before or something similar that happened to them, they immediately use their logic and their preconceived ideas uh, how to deal with this thing. So often these people might be a bit more uh, rougher, so to speak, because they would approach already, even if something new comes to them, they would emotionally approach it with ideas how this thing should be solved or how this thing should happen after that. or. Uh, uh, you know, trying to defend their opinions and their uh, beliefs about what this thing is, their conceptions and their ideas about this thing is, but still it centers them because it gives them ability to act, it gives them logic to fall back on, uh, to center themselves emotionally, uh, and, um, you know, it gives them ability to assert themselves, to protect themselves somehow, uh, and to take action. If Saturn is before or after, Saturn is another more difficult planet, but still it's great to have it. Any planet in the sign before or after the moon, it's fantastic, you know, as long as you have it, whether it's a difficult planet or no. And Saturn will make the people react emotionally with more composure, with more balance. Saturn is the planet of detachment. So something negative happens to them and they kind of detach emotionally. Or they get told that, for instance, they're going into Harvard, they got the exam or they, they won the 
lotto or whatever, they got a new job, and they detach themselves so they can react a bit more coolly. Uh, and they, they might feel a bit more detached to others, but this is what gives them composure. So they detach with more cautiousness, uh, with a bit more of an analytical, deeper mind, you know, but they keep composure. Saturn is this very stabilizing and more serious planet, so they're not go exuberant, crazy, like if you had Mars, they would react too much enthusiastically, for instance, which is still okay, you know, they would react with action and get things moving and going immediately, you know, but these people would be the opposite, they would be more reserved, they would wait out, they would analyze the situation, but they would still keep their composure and their emotional balance, you know, and uh, they would detach themselves first from the situations, whether positive or negative, to observe how things are happening, you know, and then they would take, they would make their move. Oh, you know, so there is composure and coolness about those people as well. Uh, and uh, what happens for poor us who don't have <laughs> anything around the moon, you know? They're a bit more, you know, as I said, they're a bit more when things get thrown at them. It takes them longer time to adapt. It takes them longer to react properly. But this can be offset if there is a planet. It's not the same strength, but if there is a planet exactly opposite the moon here, or uh, on a cross from the moon, you know? You have to look at the houses on a cross here. This is how it's gonna be in those houses. If it's on an angle from the moon, which means in the sign opposite, in the sign uh, at a square angle from the moon, or even in the same sign as the moon. So basically, uh, if you have another planet here, here, which is at a 90 degrees from the moon, here, so basically we need to see a cross, so on a cross on an angle from the moon, this can still anchor the emotions and it can anchor you, uh, balance you, say you have the moon here, then you, this can be stabilized by any planets on an angle, you know, on any of the angles, here, 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 or in the same sign as the moon. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is a bit more complex to see, but it's actually not that hard. And this, this has still most stabilizing and focusing this, the, the, any planet on an angle from the moon will focus and stabilize the mind in the same way that we talked about the previous planet. And these are only the five planets, as we said. We don't count Rahu, we don't count Ketu, which are the south and north node of the moon. We don't count the sun. Uh, actually, for the sun, when it's full moon, it means the sun is opposite the moon. Then it's actually, it can have a more stabilizing influence, but only when it's in full moon, when it's opposite the moon. Uh, in, the in the house opposite the moon, you know, here, if, it's, if you're using the Western chart, it will be in the sign opposite. Uh, but still, it's not as strong as having planets on the sides of the moon because you have buffers of your emotions. You can keep composure, you can keep your mind more focused and more stable. People without planets around them, they, uh, or, or, or they can have planets in the angles from the moon, but it's not as strong and as powerful when they have planets on the sides of the moon because this is, as I said, it anchors them. Uh, and those who don't have it, they're more unanchored, they're more uh, fickle in following their goals and the things that they want because of, because of the emotional swing that they have and the uh, more slower adaptability. But as I said, it can be canceled if their planets on the side, on the, on, an, on, on the angles from the moon but it's not as powerful as having it, the original one. And the best combination is if you have, say, one planet on one side and, uh, say, another planet on the other side, and then you have a double buffer. So these people are the most emotionally stable. They tend to have more successful life than others. So somehow, um, I can't say with more ease, but they, they meet anything that happens to them with less drama and with less vicissitudes. And it takes them shorter time to stabilize themselves than people who don't have any planets on the side. So these people pick up themselves and go faster, you know, and oh, you can have even sometimes, you know, two planets on this side and two planets on the other side, you know, uh, it's even better then. It's even more buffering to, to comes and you can combine all the qualities of those different planets. So it is, it is good. These people tend to, as I said, have more um, uh, 
to have more balances in your emotions. But anyone uh, can be successful in life. It's just those people who don't have those planets around the moon, as we said. It might be a bit more emotionally sensitive, emotionally more reactive, emotionally more confused somehow before they can adapt to a situation. Uh, and uh, I think it's a very interesting thing. Please write to me, do you agree? Uh, do you observe this in your life? We we'll often will feel it like um, uh, you will feel the qualities of the planets in the signs be preceding and after the moon uh, um, quite strong in your life. You'll feel it like a planet which very much describes uh, how you perceive reality and how you emotionally react to things, you know. Uh, so these planets are very important and this can be diminished if you have a planet here or here stabilizing the moon in the preceding or following signs. This influence can be diminished if you have the moon in the same sign as Rahu or Ketu. If Rahu or Ketu in the same sign as the moon, they kind of have a blocking influence on the ability of the moon to, to get uh, balanced by those other planets on the side because Rahu and Ketu, they're like eclipses. They cause the eclipses, the nodes, these are the nodes of the moon. And when the moon is in the same sign as the nodes, Rahu and Ketu, it is an eclipse, so the moon doesn't have the same receptivity and the same focus. So it means the mind of the person and the emotional reaction of the person are more um, either too conditioned when it's with Ketu to react to things, to, to react to the new things in the environment. They're too conditioned by the past things, so nothing really influences them. Influences influences system so smooth or rock makes the mind much more wild and crazy you know but it's still it's good if you have a balancing influence on the side of the moon if it's with rock and ketu because it it, it you know balances it, it more you know uh, and um, there is more composure coming of those people there is more peacefulness coming you know the emotionally more centered you can imagine i have no planets on the signs before and after the moon, and I have Rahu in the sign of the moon. So a lot of people say, why are you so nervous? There's so much nervous energy around you. You're a bit jittery, you're a bit like chaotic. Well, that's one of the reasons. I don't have my crutches to center me emotionally, and I have a eclipse on my moon, so my mind is even more chaotic and running around, you know? But that's life, you know? So I'm learning to center myself. People without planets on the side of the moon, they have to learn to center themselves emotionally, not to rely on out the crutches like drugs or alcohol or, uh, you know, some uh, emotional dependency or something which takes them, which makes them more centered emotionally. They have to learn to ground themselves by uh, meditation, by prayer, by conscious work because if you don't have people who have planets around the moon, they kind of, by default, they know how to ground themselves and how to protect themselves emotionally, how to react with more balance, you know. People who don't have, they have to learn it consciously, as I said, meditation, prayer, contact with nature, uh, uh, basically more rhythm and regularity in their life, more, uh, more consistency in their life, trying to put it by, you know, as I said, trying to, cultivate those qualities in themselves. Well, thank you very much, and please share what is your experience, how do you, uh, how do you feel about this, what, share your stories, do you agree with what I said, we're making a research now, astrological, this is very ancient astrology and very simple one, but some very powerful as well, astrological method, thank you.